third performer for the evening is Blair of Detroit Rock City. Blair is a 2010 Callaloo Fellow and Seattle Bent Mentor Award recipient, as well as National Poetry Slam Champion, who returned like five minutes ago from Russia. So he'll be glad to stay up all night and drink with you because that's what he's been doing for the, for the last little while here. Um, thank you for hanging out with the Atlanta Queer Lit Fest, especially in this cool closing event that we have for you. Hi, my name's Blair. I'm from Detroit. Joanna mentioned Mecca one of her poems. Of, and I was thinking about the mosque that's being built in New York, which isn't really a mosque, but it's part of <laughs> what it is. Um, and, uh, and I was thinking, I wanted to write about it, but I wanted to write about it in some different way. And so I was thinking about other things that are built in neighborhoods that no one wants. And I was thinking about a gay club being built in a neighborhood where no one wanted it. And so I wrote this short poem. This is called Mecca. They built a club in our neighborhood, Mecca. I was too young to be asked what I thought. There was talk of perversity, un-American activity, talk of violence. Some families spoke of fear of sending their kids to school in a neighborhood where candy might be found on the ground the next morning. They built it anyway. Despite trash cans thrown through windows, notes attached to rocks, men stood like towers in the distance, proclaiming freedom arms stretched, their hands held, torches, claiming liberty. The institution was leveled, mirrors broken. I was just a boy who liked dancing and throwing paper planes, who dreamed of being a sphinx for Halloween. This is called Into Darkness. Through boughs of weeping willows, I see you. Through cracks and wooden slats of shack housing, I see you. Through factory steam and junkyard dust, fire hydrant water, hospital gowns, crowded dance floors and athletic TV screens, I see you. Through slave ships and radio waves, religious fog and graveyard dirt, I see you. When I was a boy, they called me that. As I grew, they called me that and worse. The word black hung from tongues like thick brown sap, dripped through lips like loose meat, shook from fingertips, pounded from fists, or hovered in the air like police helicopters. Black was always shit and rotten. Stop acting black. It was never sweet. It was never rich. It was never universal or outer space. It was never onyx and oil and diamond dust and white. It was always snow, always pure. It was never smoke or smog or blinding or plain. It was always light and good, not dark and bad like dirt. They say there are places in Africa where the dirt is so black, so dark, so rich that anything can grow in it, and that's what I want to be. That's what culture means, isn't it? A place where things can grow. I want to be that. I want to be diamond-dusted carbon creases, black as the innermost core of the earth, dark as a math class blackboard that expands some space where some of our first problems were solved. I want to be that black. I want to be dark as the cool shade you seek when the bright white light is just too hot. I want to be black as Michael Jordan's head cutting through the sky, leaving not a trace black as Marley's hair, whipping like dread, locked in a cage of angry bones, spinning round and around and around and around the redemption songs of Fire. I want to be black, as Paul Robeson, the day he broke the race barrier at Rutgers, sang opera, yet never turned his back on us, who learned how to speak 12 languages fluently so that he could hear his way through the world, come back and teach us so-called darkies and white trash, the things that are being done in all our names. I want to be that black. I want to be Claude McKay black, Elijah McCoy, Benjamin Banneker black. I want to be Nina Simone, Tracy Chapman Black. I want to be Coltrane Black. I want to be Dreadlock Black, Sapphire Black, Nat Turner, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass Black. I want to be Harriet Tubman Tough, CLR James, James Baldwin, Bear Rustin Black. I want to be, how's it going, brother? What up, sister? Black. I want to be Langston Hughes. I want to be Michael Jackson Black. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> because Mike was so black, he danced and sang and performed so hard, I'm telling y'all, it fell off. My grandmother had the skin disease vitiligo. She was the same complexion as Mike when she passed. As for the rest of that mess that came from Mike's father, 
who himself was a black man in a steel town in a racist country that would not let him vote. Was he a motherfucker? Hell yeah. But what was going on in Papa Joe Jackson's American life that made him make his children dance while he whipped them with the belt? I am Michael Jackson Black because I can understand how insane this world can make you feel. When I was a boy, they called me that. And as I grew, they called me that and worse. Some white children wanted to cut me to see if my blood was black. They did. It was. I am.